Today it's all about jump rings. Jump rings are an integral part of jewellery making so it's important that you know how to use them and of course what they are. Hi, my name's Carol and welcome to my channel. It is so lovely to have you here. Let's jump right in and have a look at some jump rings and how you would use them. What I've got in front of me is a series of jump rings, different sizes and different shapes. I've also got a couple of earrings that I've used jump rings to create. So let's have a look. This is the Trinity earring. I've used jump rings here to attach the rings together and also secure the little dangles that hang in the centre of the rings. I've also used the jump ring to connect the ear wire in this case. In this little dragon scale earring, I've used the jump rings to connect the beads to the connectors. So you can see that jump rings are used to connect things. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what I've got here. So I'm gonna start at the smallest side. Now jump rings do come in, as I said, in a variety of shapes and sizes. Most commonly jump rings are round or oval. So what makes a jump ring a jump ring? Jump rings can be either open or closed. Now by that I mean that they can have a split in them. If you have a look at this one here, you can see that it has a split in the top, which means it can be opened or closed. Some jump rings don't have splits and they're called closed jump rings. So this one here doesn't have a split at all and it's a closed jump ring. So if you think about it, you might want to open a jump ring so that you can attach something to it. So if I take this jump ring, I can open it and attach loops and things to it. So that is why you would use a jump ring. Let's start at the beginning. I've got a four millimeter jump ring here. You can see it's quite small. And this is an open jump ring. And this one is in a red copper color. Next here, I have a six millimeter jump ring in a silver and also in a copper. Obviously these come in gold as well. Now these are the most common sizes that people use, um, 4mm and 6mm. Having said that, I do sell a lot of 10mm ones as well. For me personally, I do find that 4mm jump rings are quite challenging when you have a lot of stuff to put on to a component. For example, I used 4mm jump rings here. Now there's not too much going on to this jump ring, so that was fine. There's only two, two things going on it the bead and the connector, but if I had a lot of stuff going on there, I would find that quite challenging. So we've got four millimeter, six millimeter, and 10 millimeter, and I've got a 20 millimeter here as well. Now you'll notice that there's different thicknesses between the uh, jump rings as well. So the thickness of the wire that makes up the jump ring is called the gauge. And you can see here, if I compare these two jump rings, you'll see that this one on the left is made from a thicker gauge wire than this one on the right. Those are 10 millimeter ones, and that's a black one, and obviously a gold. Now I've got a 20 millimeter one here as well. As well as that, I've got an oval one here. This one is a six by four millimeter um, jump ring. Now I actually used oval jump rings when I made the Trinity earrings. And the reason I did that was because with the closed ring and the dangle and another closed ring going into that one jump ring, it actually was too tight to use a round one. So the oval one worked really well. You can also get triangle shaped jump rings and you can even get them in heart shape. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So it's worth having a look. If you've got a specific idea of what you want to use the jump ring for, then go ahead and have a look and see what you can find. Next, I want to show you how to open and close a jump ring because this is really, really important. Now I have here two pairs of chain nose pliers. Chain nose pliers are just pliers that have a flat side on the inside. So we don't want to damage the wire of the jump ring when we are opening it. So it's important that they're nice and smooth there. And the best way to open a jump ring is with two pairs. So what I'm going to do is take one side of the ring in one pair of pliers and one side in the other. The reason that I'm doing this this way is, is that I, so that I don't damage the jump ring. 
To open the jump ring, what I'm going to do is hold my one hand stable and I'm going to move the other one. So I'm moving one hand down and holding the other one to, just in the same place. And you'll notice then that the jump ring's opened and it is, it, then I can feed on something like a charm or whatever it is I need to feed on. Now to close it, you just reverse that process. So holding it and bringing your hand up. Now, if it doesn't close properly, you can see there it's not. What you do is you just wiggle backwards and forwards until it closes. And mine is now closed, but I wanted to demonstrate something to you. So if my ring isn't quite closed, and this one's quite a heavy gauge, so it's actually quite challenging to open and close. So what I'm going to do here, see that it's not quite closed there? So to do that, to close it properly, what I'm going to do is wiggle up and down and push slightly towards the other pliers as I go until I feel it, and you will feel it, kind of grate against the other side of the ring. Now it's important when you do open and close a jump ring that you don't hold your pliers like this. If I hold my jump ring like this and I try to open it, I'm actually going to bend my jump ring in the process. It's also important that you don't open it this way. If you open a jump ring that way, let me show you. You can see now that I have lost the ring of my, the nice circle of my jump ring. So I can never get that back. <laughs> no matter how much I try to manipulate this jump ring, it will never go back to the actual perfect circle that it was before. You can see there I'm having a real hard time with this, uh, with this jump ring because it's such a heavy gauge. But if I push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, I'm getting it close. Oops. But it's not perfectly round like it was before. So it's really, really important that you know how to open and close the jump ring correctly. And that's supporting on either side with your pliers. So holding it. Holding it like this instead of like this is really, really important. And opening and closing it up and down. If it's not closed, you push in as you wiggle up and down slightly. And if it's crossed over, you just pull out as you wiggle up and down slightly. Okay. And you can see now I've totally destroyed my jump ring. <laughs> it's a completely different shape than it was when we started. That's all I have to say about jump rings for today. I hope you found that really useful and that it has helped you to become a better jewelry maker. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video and of course ring the bell to, so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content, which is about once a week. Also check out my Instagram and my Facebook and I'll leave links for that in the description box below. And leave me a comment and let me know if you found this video interesting and also what you'd like to see me make in the future. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.